everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Jamie and this is Texas Girl DIYs. I am excited for this video for two reasons. The first reason is because this video is in part of the Look For Less Challenge hosted by Yami, the Latina next door. She uh, hosts this uh, challenge monthly and this one just so happens to be the last one she is doing for the year 2020. So what you wanna do is go down to my description box. I'm gonna leave her channel link down there and you want to click on that and be sure to subscribe to her channel and ring that little bell so that if you want to join in on this challenge when she starts it back up next year you want to be notified when she makes that announcement her co-host this month is elisa burningham and she is so sweet i'm going to leave her channel also linked down in the description box below you want to subscribe to her she does some really fantastic very high-end diys she does some thrift store flips and some seasonal decorating the other reason why I'm excited for this video is because it's been a while since I've done a thrift store flip as well. So that is what this video is going to be. Um, my husband and I just recently went antiquing and so we had picked up this beautiful armoire that I'm going to repurpose. So I am excited to show you what I did. For this challenge, I'm going to be repurposing this armoire my husband and I had picked up over at an antique store. We had gotten this for $50, which is a really great deal considering these go for a heck of a lot more. And as you can see, this is in really rough shape. It is um, dusty. It is dirty. Um, there are crayon marks and paint marks, and um, it was scratched up and dinged up really bad. Um, and you can see the price tag on here. It's, they were originally selling it for $150 and they marked it down to 85. And then when we came along, the guy decided to make us a deal and sold it to us for $50. Some of the hardware was a little bent and twisted, but my husband was able to fix that. And, um, yeah. And then I just went ahead and decided that I was going to go and sand some of this stuff off. I mean, yes, you can see, and then it's also missing. There is um, velvet inside this drawer here. That's the only one. And then the bottom two drawers, they don't have velvet, but the drawers are missing some knobs. So I do go to Hobby Lobby and pick some up. So just really quick, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is like our before, <laughs> you know, it's all, you know, dinged up, scratched up, painted on, and God knows what else is on this thing. So this is what it looks like now. So the first thing I want to do to get started on this project is I want to get some sanding done to it because like I said, this is in rough shape. So my husband thought that it might be a good idea to try to use some sandblasting. <laughs> As you can see, it got me right in my face. And for those of you who are not familiar with sandblasting, um, basically it is just to try to get the finish off of this um, piece of furniture. Uh, that black hose that you can see is actually um, in... The other end of it is inside a bucket of uh, sand, which I think the sand is actually made of coal. And then the other hose is actually hooked up to an air compressor. And then you just squeeze a little trigger and the sand blasts out and it does work. It like it blasts the finish off of the um, furniture piece. And <laughs> but the problem is, is that it is blasting me back in my face. And let me tell you, I am not having a good time. So I go ahead and I hand this off to my husband let him have fun with it because I had enough. <laughs> so he got most of the trim off of there. And let me tell you, when he was done, his arms were covered in this black um, coal sand, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know. But anyway, it was a mess and it hurt. I'll never do that again. <laughs> so I gave up on the sandblasting and I decided to use a palm sander instead. <laughs> So here I am using that palm sander and I have got um, 80 grit sandpaper on this thing and this spot right here had some really deep grooves onto it. 
So the sanding was actually working in most places, wherever there was like, you know, the paint or marker or whatever kids had put on this, I don't even know what, the dings, the scratches, the sander worked perfectly. But for the rest of the furniture piece, it was not, um, it was not actually taking the finish off. So I did what I could. I smoothed everything out and I just decided to go ahead and paint. But before I start painting, I go ahead with my crud cutter and wipe everything down nice and clean. For the paint, I'm using the Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in Chiffon Cream, and I do two coats all over everything. And before I start, I line my um, pan with um, some plastic wrap because my pan was actually kind of dirty from painting, you know, previous projects, and I thought that I could just kind of help keep things clean by lining it with some plastic wrap first, and it worked mostly until my plastic wrap started shifting on me, and then it was, you know, all over the place, so, but anyway, <laughs> it was a good try. So anyway, as you can see, I, you're, you're going to see me do the first coat on this, but um, I don't bother showing you the second coat because, I mean, how much do you really want to see me paint? I have to say the chiffon cream color is definitely becoming one of my favorite colors for furniture. <laughs> So like I said, I did give everything two coats of this uh, chalk paint. I just didn't bother showing you the second coat because, you know, I didn't think you would actually want to see that. What I did forget to show you was that I did paint the drawers, but you'll see that later. So now I wanted to seal it with this polyacrylic protective finish and I did one coat all over everything. I start with the, um, the top piece with the doors and I started to do the door and then I realized I forgot I wanted to give this a light distressing. So I grabbed my sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and I just do some light distressing over the, um, the details of the furniture piece. Once I have all my sanding done, I just go over this and dust everything off with a lint-free cloth. And now I can go back with that polyacrylic sealer. <laughs> go ahead and repeat the same steps to the bottom half of this armoire. Now I'm sure that you will see the spot on the bottom of this armoire that um, it's kind of like a coffee stain color um, spot on the bottom. I have tried sanding it and I put three coats of paint over top of it and each time it still keeps bleeding through. So I don't know if it's like some kind of oil-based stain or something that's going on right there, but if anybody's got any suggestions, please let me know. And this is where I finally show you the shelves that I did actually paint. And yes, they are balancing on the back of my husband's truck because I have got nowhere else to put them. <laughs> and so I am just applying one coat of that sealer on the shelves. Not the shelves, the drawers. So this is how my farmhouse armoire turned out in the end and I am so happy with this. So just to show you my inspiration piece came from Wayfair costing $1,639.99. Mine only cost $62. That was $50 for the armoire and only $12 for the hardware with a savings of $1,577.99. I thought that was huge. So 
So like I said, I had picked up the doorknobs from Hobby Lobby and it just so happened that they were selling them for 50% off and I picked up these adorable little wagon wheels and they were originally like $3.99 I think. And then the other knobs that I had picked up were the, um, the ones that are on the bottom two drawers. Those two right there on the smallest drawer were actually the original knobs that are on the top two doors. These ones right here with the little rings, I had picked those up um, again, 50% off. I think those were $1.99 originally. So I thought I got a pretty good deal on the hardware for this. And um, so like I said, I only spent $62 on this armoire where, you know, if you were to go to Wayfair or any other uh, department store, you would be paying a heck of a lot more. So I definitely recommend checking your checking out your antique store, Goodwill, any thrift shop, because you can find some gorgeous furniture that just needs a little TLC. All right, that is it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell so you don't miss a thing. Also, don't forget to go down to the description box and there will be a playlist link that you can click on that will bring you to all the other creators participating in this challenge. And also don't forget to check out Yami the Latina Next Door and Lisa Burningham. Their channels will be also in the description box down below. Y'all have a wonderful blessed day. Bye.